Inflation for the month of May fell to 4% over a 12-month period, the lowest level in more than two years. That's according to data released Tuesday by the Labor Department. From April to May, food and shelter prices barely budged, increasing less than a percentage point each. Used car prices rose more than 4% in the same time period, and energy prices fell 3.6%. The slowdown in consumer prices comes as the Federal Reserve meets to weigh whether or not to raise interest rates again in the inflation fight. Joining me now to discuss these numbers is David Wessel. He's director of the Hutchins Center on Fiscal and Monetary Policy at the Brookings Institution. So, David, what stood out to you in today's report? Well, it seems to me that inflation is no longer a crisis, but it's still a problem. For ordinary consumers, the fact that prices rose only one-tenth of a percentage point in May, 4% over the last 12 months, as you suggested, that's good news and much better than the news we've seen in, in the recent months. But underlying that, there's still inflation is still kind of stubborn, and that's a concern uh, to everybody who has to worry about the future, consumers and the Federal Reserve. And is inflation stubborn in a way that uh, Jerome Powell might be, you know, in a particular way that for him would be would be telling? I know he's been worried about wages. Um, what what inside that number would would potentially be uh, um, noticeable for the Fed as they think about rates going forward? Well, um, as you mentioned, used car prices are up a lot for the last couple of months. They were down some time before that. Egg prices, which soared, are down some, although they're still much higher than they were before the pandemic. What uh, Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, wants to do is look beyond these very volatile things and say, what's the underlying pace of inflation? He has his own particular measure, which is called super core, which excludes certain things. And that's still too strong. So I think what Jay Powell is saying, I'm glad we've made some progress against inflation, but it's not improving quickly enough for me to meet my 2% inflation target in the near term. Right. Uh, I do expect the Fed to, as the word is, skip a rate increase this week, but I think they're going to signal that more rate increases are ahead. And what's your view these days, David, about uh, a, a recession, um, or does this inflation number suggest perhaps the chances of a soft landing are, are more possible, inflation plus the employment picture? Right. Well, as you point out, the jobs market is incredibly strong and continues to surprise us. Uh, and demand in the economy is not anywhere near what you would expect if we were in a recession now. The concern is that things are just about to soften, that people have spent the money they saved during the pandemic when they couldn't go shopping or take travel, and that the full impact of the Fed's increases in interest rates, which have been remarkably rapid, uh, five percentage points in a year have yet to fully take its toll. We could have some damage from the banking system lying ahead. Banks may be reluctant to lend because we've had some problems there. And it looks like student loan payments are going to have to resume in the fall. That'll take some consumer demand. The recession has been predicted, but it refuses to show up. Uh, most of the forecasters who expected a recession still expect one. They just said it's going to be later. And I'm in that camp. I think the Fed will raise interest rates until the labor market gives, until unemployment goes up, because that's what they think has to happen to bring inflation down to their target. And I think that means a recession end of this year or early next. But I'm not very confident of that forecast. All right, well, we'll check back in with you again. David Wessel, director of the Hutchins Center on Fiscal and Monetary Policy at the Brookings Institution. Thanks a lot, David.